Ancient Data yet be the real junior. Welcome to Video Assisted Instruction Data Warehousing Series. And our topic for today is about OLAP versus OLTP. The second one is the data warehouse concepts. And the last one we have integrating heterogeneous databases. Now let's proceed with the OLAP versus OLTP. Okay, we have here number one, uh, the difference between the two. Data warehouse OLAP, it involves historical processing of information. While operational database OLTP, OLTP identifies as online transaction processing. Okay, it is for the transaction. Now, it involves day-to-day -day processing because day-to-day -day or daily we have transaction. Now, number two, all app systems are used by knowledge workers such as executives, managers, and analysts. And in operational database, OLTP, is considered to be a system that are used by clerks, database administrator, or database professionals. Now number three, data warehouse OLAP, it is used to analyze the business. While in operational database OLTP, it is used to run the business. So it means to say, without operational database so the organization or the business is not yet having its system now number four it focuses on information out in a data warehouse all up while in operational database it focuses on data inputs okay so data warehouse is for the information output while operational database is for the data inputs okay number five we have in a data warehouse OLAP it is based on a star schema snowflake schema and fact constellation schema while the operational database OLTP it is used based on entity relationship model. If you're going to ask me about this schema, those three schema mentioned in data warehouse, a schema identifies design. So we have the star design, the snowflake design, and the fact constellation design under data warehouse all up okay now while in operational database we have entity relationship and of course we have plenty of entity relationship so we have one to one one to many many to many many to one so those are the entity relationship model Okay, that is the difference between the two. Now, uh, number six we have here under data warehouse OLAP, it focuses on information out as we mentioned in number four. While in operational database, it is application oriented. So operational database needs to create by those programmers okay that uh, they needed a system and a database system to make it an application oriented number seven it contains historical data from the data warehouse because they're going to analyze the data under the history while in operational database OLTP it contains the current data and that is true because that is the transaction daily day-to-day -day or daily basis transaction now number eight 
It provides summar summarized and consolidated data. So, a summary of uh, data integration. While in operational database, it provides primitive and highly detailed data. What is input, that is the output. So, we have the saying in computer YCWIG, what you get is uh, what you see is what you get. YCWIG. Okay, next. Number nine in Data Warehouse OLAP, it provides summarized and multi dimensional view of data. So that's why I mentioned in our previous discussion that uh, we have three dimensional view of identifying and summarizing the data or the historical data. Now, in operational database, it provides detailed and flat relational view of data. So, when we identified flat, uh, I mentioned it on our first topic. It uh, composes of uh, a data, okay, inputted in Notepad, and even other uh, connection string databases. Now, number 10 difference of OLAP versus OLTP. The number of users is in hundreds. So it means to say in OLAP, they, they can analyze as much as many as hundreds. While in operational database, the number of users is in thousands. Okay. So because we have plenty of users under the operational databases. Let's have an example, bank. So everyday transaction of uh, Bank of the Philippines, land bank, okay? So if you're going to summarize all of it under online, it is considered to be thousands or more than a thousands. Now, in data warehouse, uh, because the analysts can analyze the data, that's why we have few. So it's considered to be hundreds only. Now, number 11, the number of records assessed is a million. While in operational database, the number of records assessed is intense. Okay? Now, um, why is considered to be million? Because of the history of records or data. Remember that the way to where data warehouse needs to summarize the history of the data. That's why it, it can be assessed in million. While in operational database, on the exact date only, okay? For example, updating on the exact day. So it could be tens only. Number 12, the database size is from 100 GB to 100 terabyte. So, this is considered to be huge, okay, uh, massive. Uh, and in operational database, the database size is from 100 MB to 100 GB. Again, the same explanation. Because on the transaction, it should be on a daily basis. In data warehouse, it should be on the history. It means to say, from the previous to the present while in the operational it should be the present only that's why we have a big capacity in terms of the database size form in data warehouse number 13 they are highly flexible in data warehouse yes because they only view they can query it only now in operational database it provides high performance and that is true there should be effectiveness and efficiency in terms of the operation. Now, we are finished with the OLAP versus OLTP, uh, online analytical processing and online transaction processing. Now, let's move on to the data warehouse concept.
data warehousing concept we have here so it identifies first what is a data warehouse so a data warehousing is the process of constructing and using a data warehouse okay so because of its ing okay the last uh, alphabet we have here okay the suffix housing now the process of constructing and using a data warehouse and it's true very easy because that is the suffix okay on the second paragraph we have a data warehouse is constructed by integrating data from multiple heterogeneous sources that support analytical reporting structured and or ad hoc queries and decision making now uh, we we already discussed uh, those words okay uh, but uh, due to the implication of understanding what we are talking about so let me give you a, a brief discussion about this when we said integrating we are uh, putting it into a one form of data okay so when we said multiple it should be in a 3d way okay three-dimensional when we said heterogeneous sources it is considered to be similar to each other similar to each other so that's why we can analyze them we can have the result of the report another is that what you call structured and or ad hoc queries and or so it means to say uh, we can query on the exact time or there is no need to query and that is what you called and or okay there are times that due to the structure uh, we need to query the data but sometimes there should be no implication at all that's why we don't need queries and that is what you called and or ad hoc queries and the last one is the decision making without the result without the result of the analysis we cannot make decision making okay because decisions comes into the evaluation of statistics okay uh, as we educate we can learn that before you decide you need to have a feasibility study and a feasibility study is very similar in prediction okay that's why we have the decision making after we gathered the report okay so let's continue the last one so data warehousing involves data cleaning data integration and data consolidation so when we said data cleaning data integration data consolidation they're all included in data mining okay because data mining is to make the data precise without any errors so you it's already been cleaning the data and data integration is something like you're going to put it all together and data consolidation when we said consolidation it is the same as integration you, we consolidate it means to say we talk to each other we integrate before we decide the analysis okay so next so we have here figure 8 there is a what you call a data warehousing concepts and uh, you will notice on the left side of the figure 
there's a, what you call database, ERP, mainframe, CRM, flat files. Those are the source system. And it goes directly to the storage. It has been extracted from those part of the source system. And that is what you call operational. Now, this storage databases gather the data sources and transform it into an enterprise data warehouse system. So, it loads raw data, summary data, and metadata. Now, on the other part, we have the ad hoc reports, the standard ad hoc reports. Second is the dashboard. And the third one is the data visualization and analytics. So, if you notice right here on the figure itself, we can check instantly the company's profile. Okay? So, imagine if there is no data warehousing system and its architecture it's very hard for a certain businessman or analyst to identify what would be the result of the business on that day so that is one point of uh, clearly identifying uh, the failures for example, in financing. So you can identify instantly the failure of your employees. Okay? So for example, they, they have the quota, something like 1 million or 4 million each uh, day. And then you notice that it goes down to 100,000 only on that day. So you are... Uh, you are considered to be given uh, a chance to note about what happening okay next using data warehouse information there are decision support technologies that help utilize the data available in a data warehouse these technologies help executive to use the warehouse quickly and effectively so this talks about utilization how do we need to utilize the data in the database itself or in the data warehouse itself okay we can utilize i think we can utilize quickly and effectively if number one they're going to pass the transaction updates every day after after they finish working okay before they go home those employees they need to update it online so through utilization you can check it instantly every day also at night because they are uh, what they call update it online now the second one they can gather data analyze it and take decision based on the information present in the warehouse yes so after they update it so you can gather the data you can analyze it and you can take decision based on the information present in the warehouse. Uh, that is what I mentioned in the example. Then the last, the information gathered in a warehouse can be used in any of the following domains. So we have here domains. Actually, domains identify as characteristics. So let's check it out. So we have here uh, on this slide, it gives us three domains number one tuning production strategies so 
It identifies that the product strategies can be well tuned by repositioning the products and managing the product portfolios by comparing the sales quarterly or yearly. So, right here, uh, this is good. Why? Because it is quarterly or yearly. Uh, quarterly, you can uh, count it as 3, 6, 9, 12, and that is uh, quarts, quarterly. So, every three months. So, we can tune, yes, it's true. Uh, analysts can tune the product. Okay, they can uh, reposition it, and that is true. Next, customer analysis. Customer analysis is done by analyzing the customer buying preferences, buying time, and budget cycle, etc. So, this one is something like you're looking for a target. Okay, what time they're going to buy. Uh, how much money they're going to spend and what product they're going to buy and uh, what are the the ceiling of their budgets okay so that is the customer analysis so again it is good uh, because if you are putting up a business you can learn plenty things here in the data warehousing because you are not only analyzing your your business plan your product your sales your employees but you also analyze those buyers okay or customer then the third one we have operations analysis data warehousing also helps in customer relationship management and making environmental corrections the information also allows us to analyze business operations. Okay, um, again, operational analysis, I think this is very hard for the data warehousing part because there is what you call operational transaction. But operational transaction and operational analysis are very different. Since analysts can also analyze the operation due to it provides also problems. Okay? So for example, if you needed on the time the historical data, uh, then the the operational transaction they didn't even produce it so as as analysts I'm going to ask about those uh, DBAs database administrator why is that the the needed documents are not being uh, reported so I think this operational analysis is something like pointing out on the IT's okay of the company how do they handle uh, the clerk was been mentioned on the example the database administrator the analyst okay uh, is also included in the operational analysis okay so maybe the board is uh, the part of this operational operations analysis now let's continue so we are finished with all of versus all tp and the second is data warehousing concepts and the last one we have right now is integrating heterogeneous data now integrating heterogeneous database is uh, given us two approaches the first one is the query driven approach and the second one is an update driven approach so this is very easy to discuss okay because we have only two and it is heterogeneous okay so here we have a figure number nine 
integrating heterogeneous database. Below, we have the source, and that is considered to be the data. We have the extractor monitor, or they are going to extract the data to a more useful form. They're going to integrate the data under integration system. It goes to the metadata and back again and goes to the data warehouse. Then the clients can identify the reports. Okay? And that report considered to be an update and a query. So we have only two. Now, the query-driven approach, this is the traditional approach to integrate heterogeneous databases. This approach was used to build wrappers and integrators on top of multiple heterogeneous databases. These integrators are also known as mediators. Okay, that is what you call the query-driven approach. While the process of query-driven approach, when a query is issued to a client side, a metadata dictionary translates the query into an appropriate form for individual heterogeneous sites involved. Now these queries are mapped and sent to the local query processor. The results from heterogeneous sites are integrated into a global answer set. So let's have an example. You want to have uh, a motorcycle. So what you need to do is you're going to use online or you are not using online. If you're going to use online, you can browse the website of each company that sells motorcycle. Example, Honda. So, you can go to honda.com. Then you are being viewed the different types of motorcycle. Uh, another is the category. Okay, there, there are plenty. Okay, so you can map it. Another is there's also a price. And right now, they're in the tuning of uh, the warehouse. Is something like you can compare what you uh, selected as in the motorcycle online this is what you call the process of query driven approach so if we're going to compare it you can analyze it much more clearly okay since uh, on the other side of the business is that you can check out what products are considered to be viable Okay, uh, that is the idea of this process. Next, disadvantage of process query approach. Query driven approach needs complex integration and filtering process. That is true. Why? As I gave you an example, you compare two different motorcycles. Imagine that how you are going to program that okay with pictures with characteristics and classification with price so it is more on the technical side of the IT now number two bullet we have this approach is very inefficient inefficient because it is not direct uh, you got me for example if you go to online you can analyze it only but if you go there directly you can buy it so there is a big difference but if I am the customer I'm going to analyze it first on online before I'm going to go directly 
to the seller okay so it is effective for me and efficient for me so but right here the process query approach into a business is considered to be inefficient in a business but in a customer it is effective and efficient now number three bullet it is very expensive for frequent queries that is true why because you're going to pay for the server so it is expensive you're going to pay for the programmers so database administrator the web developer so there are plenty uh, needed to be uh, paid and that is expenditures now this approach is also very expensive for queries that require aggregation that is true uh, because uh, if something like uh, you're going to make all of this viable through internet and then suddenly only few customers buy then it is considered to be expensive because uh, your money cannot go back okay next we have of course we have the two the query and update the second one is the update driven approach this is an alternative to the traditional approach today the data warehouse system follow update driven approach rather than the traditional approach discussed earlier the traditional approach is the query ap driven approach the update driven approach the information from multiple heterogeneous sources are integrated in advance and are stored in a warehouse this information is available for direct querying and analysis advantage of update driven approach this approach has the following advantages first bullet this approach provide high performance that is true why because you can see instantly what are the expenditures what are the profit of the company how many products are being sold number two bullet the data is copied processed integrated annotated summarized and restructured in semantic data stored in advance that is true because there's a what you call feedback of the customer this uh, there is what also what you call payment of the customer okay so that's why it is uh, considered to be semantic and the last bullet we have here query processing does not require an interface to process data at local sources yes because uh, query is made by ITs so it's very impossible that the IT on that local uh, sources uh, need to provide the data which is are not yet set okay so that is the idea so update driven approach is more advantage than the query approach now validation board OLAP versus OTP we are finished with that the data warehouse concept we are finished also with that integrating heterogeneous databases we are also finished with that that is what you call the update and the query or the traditional Congratulations, you successfully finished our lecture 4. Thank you and good luck.